In the vast silence of space, a coalition of worlds lay on the brink of extinction. They had fought hard and valiantly, but they were no match for the merciless enemy that swept through their galaxies. What started as a defensive alliance quickly became a desperate struggle for survival, and now, there was nothing left to do but hold the line. Their leaders gathered in one of the coalition's last strongholds, each representative appearing as a hologram in the dimly lit war chamber. These were proud beings, commanders, strategists, diplomats, yet now, each of them wore the same look of exhaustion and defeat. They had tried everything, diplomacy, full-force attacks, covert operations. Nothing worked. The enemy was unstoppable, and their end seemed inevitable. As silence weighed heavy in the room, one of the younger leaders spoke up, breaking the grim quiet. There's one option we haven't considered. They began hesitantly, glancing around to gauge reactions. Humanity. The word hung in the air, and for a moment, there was no response. Only the flicker of holographic light and the occasional beep from long-range sensors tracking enemy movements. Humanity? Another leader echoed, skepticism edging into their tone. The same species whose methods we've condemned for centuries? They're a wild card, barely civilized by some standards. Murmurs rippled through the room, a mixture of fear and intrigue. We're talking about creatures known for their resilience, yes, but also their unpredictability. They've been isolated on that backwater planet for a reason. A senior leader cautioned, his voice thick with worry. They have strange ways, ruthless ways. We don't know if they'll help us or if they'll become a problem of their own. But desperation has a way of making the unthinkable sound like salvation. Slowly, the fear began to give way to resignation. What other choice did they have? They were cornered, and humanity, humanity might be their last, reckless gamble. Reluctantly, they agreed to send a transmission. A high-ranking official, with the weight of the coalition's hope on their shoulders, stepped forward. They activated the ancient communication relay and crafted a simple, urgent message, asterisk. To humanity, we need your help. If you are as capable as the stories suggest, then you know the enemy we face. We beg you, respond, asterisk. The message was sent across the void, traveling through realms and subspace, crossing boundaries that most species never dared to breach. Then, all they could do was wait. As minutes stretched into hours, a quiet dread began to settle over the leaders. They put their trust in a species they barely understood, a species with tales so varied that it was hard to tell myth from truth. Some among the coalition had heard ancient stories of Earth, a harsh, war-torn planet where survival meant evolving faster than your enemies and forging weapons that seemed almost cruel in their efficiency. Just as some leaders began to regret their decision, a faint signal flickered to life. Humanity had responded, and their reply was not what anyone expected. There were no diplomatic pleasantries, no questions, no discussions. It was a single, simple message, asterisk. Hold the line. We're coming. Asterisk. The coalition leaders stared at the words in shock. This was not the response of a tentative ally or a cautious force. It was a declaration, a promise, and perhaps a threat. The leaders exchanged uneasy glances. The tone of humanity's message was both unsettling and strangely comforting. They would come, it seemed, but what that meant was beyond anyone's guess. Word spread quickly among the coalition's remaining ranks. Soldiers, worn down by endless battles and the loss of comrades, took heart. Whispers of humanity's coming spread like wildfire. And as they waited, the coalition prepared for what felt like the last stand. Each passing moment brought a mixture of dread and a flicker of hope. If the stories were true, then humanity's arrival might shift the balance. But at what cost? The silence grew thicker as everyone braced themselves. Even the battlefield seemed to sense the shift. And then, for a moment, there was nothing. The stillness was profound, as if the very fabric of space held its breath. Humanity had received the coalition's message. Earth's military command centers processed the distress call with characteristic speed and precision, but the human leaders didn't waste time with deliberation or pleasantries. The message had been clear. An enemy force was overpowering the coalition, and they needed a savior. In response, 
humanity's decision was swift, calculated, and delivered without embellishment. The coalition's desperate plea was met with a single, stark response that radiated both confidence and a hint of menace. Asterisk. Hold the line. We're coming. Asterisk. As the coalition leaders received humanity's reply, a mixture of unease and anticipation swept through them. Humanity's brevity was unsettling, no promises, no explanations, just an order to hold steady until they arrived. The response felt almost cold, as if Earth's inhabitants had calculated the odds and decided on a course of action without a moment of hesitation. This was not the careful diplomacy of other species. Instead, it felt as if humanity had been waiting for such an invitation, eager to unleash something the galaxy had yet to fully understand. In the hours that followed, the coalition's remaining forces prepared as best they could. They fortified positions, maintained their battered ships, and steeled themselves for what would either be salvation or the final push against an enemy that had broken countless others before them. The soldiers spoke of humanity with a strange reverence, fueled by the stories that had filtered through the galaxy over time. Humanity, they'd heard, was capable of unimaginable savagery in war coupled with an unparalleled will to survive. These stories, however mixed with myth, were enough to kindle hope among even the most weary. Soon, reports began to come in from the outer sectors. Humanity's fleet was on the move. Coalition scouts picked up signals of immense, coordinated military power as Earth's ships moved with frightening precision. Unlike the Coalition's own fleet, designed for defense and mutual protection, Humanity's fleet exuded a raw, predatory efficiency. Every ship in their formation had a purpose, and that purpose was destruction. Earth had mobilized not just a force, but an arsenal. As humanity's ships drew nearer, the coalition's forces received a simple command, hold their positions and await further orders. Humanity, it seemed, had taken complete control of the battle plan, and the coalition's generals were left to follow orders rather than issue them. It was a strange and humbling experience for the coalition, and used to such direct, unilateral commands from an outside force. Yet, in this moment, they found themselves obeying without question. Humanity's authority was not asserted through diplomacy but by an unspoken confidence that brooked no resistance. Tension mounted as humanity's fleet finally breached coalition space. Their ships, appearing almost ghostly against the starlit void, were sleek and menacing designed for both intimidation and overwhelming firepower. Each vessel bore the marks of countless battles, their exteriors scarred yet fully operational, a testament to humanity's resilience and refusal to retreat. As the coalition's forces held their positions, they could feel the shift in the air, a tangible energy that was hard to describe, almost as if humanity's arrival alone had altered the course of the universe. These were not saviors in the traditional sense. They were a force of nature, a storm that could just as easily obliterate as protect. When the enemy finally encountered humanity's fleet, the coalition observed the clash from a distance, their communication channels filled with fragmented reports and shock transmissions. There were no grand maneuvers, no drawn-out skirmishes. Humanity struck with the calculated precision of an apex predator, dispatching enemy vessels with ruthless efficiency. The alien fleet— which had previously torn through the coalition with ease, was now breaking apart under humanity's relentless assault. Within moments, the true nature of humanity's tactics became apparent. They used weapons that the coalition had never seen before, experimental technologies and strategies that targeted both hardware and morale. Humanity's ships seemed to move as if with a single mind, each one anticipating the enemy's moves with unnerving accuracy. It wasn't just warfare. It was domination, a complete and total dismantling of the enemy forces. For the coalition soldiers watching from afar, the scene was as terrifying as it was exhilarating. Humanity was not merely defeating the enemy. They were overwhelming them in ways that bordered on psychological warfare. Every strike, every maneuver seemed calculated to break the enemy's spirit as much as their defenses. Humanity's message in the silence between battles was clear this was what happened to those who threatened their allies. As the battle raged on, coalition leaders remained riveted to their screens, bearing witness to humanity's brutal efficiency. They had sought out Earth's help, 
but now they questioned if they truly understood the cost of unleashing such a force. Humanity's methods were beyond anything they had anticipated, as if war, for humans, was a perfected art form honed through generations of conflict. The coalition had believed themselves hardened by battle, but this, this was something else entirely. And as humanity's forces pressed forward, coalition commanders received a final, unexpected directive, hold back. Humanity would finish this themselves. There would be no need for coalition soldiers to risk their lives further. Earth had taken up the mantle of destruction, and they intended to see it through to the bitter end. The coalition forces complied, watching as humanity's fleet tore through the enemy ranks with a terrifying, cold precision that left no survivors, no opportunities for retreat. In humanity's hands this was no mere battle. It was an eradication, a statement carved into the fabric of the galaxy itself. The coalition, for the first time, felt not just hope, but a strange, unsettling awe. Humanity's fleet arrived in full force, a silent yet overwhelming presence that blanketed the battlefield. Coalition ships, worn and battered from countless engagements, seemed insignificant beside Earth's vessels, which moved with coordinated precision, each ship an integral piece of an unforgiving war machine. Humanity's armada wasn't vast in numbers, but every unit was meticulously engineered, exuding a presence that radiated both purpose and threat. The coalition commanders, observing from their strategic positions, felt a shift in the air, a sense of imminent, unstoppable momentum. Humanity's ships were built not for display, but for destruction. They lacked the ornate designs or diplomatic insignias common to other fleets, reflecting instead a harsh pragmatism that left little to interpretation. These were tools of war, honed over centuries, stripped of any unnecessary embellishment, created solely to overpower and annihilate. As the first wave of humanity's forces made contact with the enemy, the impact was immediate. The alien fleet, which had dominated the coalition for so long, now found itself outmatched in ways they had never anticipated. Humanity didn't rely on sheer numbers. They relied on absolute efficiency. Each move was calculated, each strike planned with brutal accuracy. It wasn't just combat. It was an exercise in complete domination. Enemy ships fell one by one, not through chaotic exchanges but through precise, relentless dismantling. Humanity's tactics were unlike anything the coalition had seen. While other species often relied on overwhelming numbers or defensive formations, humanity seemed to understand the enemy on a level that was almost unnerving. Their fleet adapted, shifted, and adjusted to every maneuver with an eerie anticipation. It was as if each vessel anticipated the enemy's movements, predicting counterattacks before they could even materialize. Humanity's forces operated in flawless sync, moving as a singular, unyielding entity that applied pressure without mercy. For the coalition soldiers witnessing this spectacle, it was both a revelation and a reminder of humanity's reputation. Earth's defenders didn't waver, hesitate, or grant any mercy. Their strikes were delivered with clinical detachment, their ships focusing solely on the objective. Enemy ships were targeted and eliminated with ruthless efficiency, and every effort to mount a counterattack was met with an immediate, crushing response. To humanity, the enemy fleet was merely a series of problems to be solved, and they did so without hesitation, without pause, and without compassion. Amidst the chaos, a clear message became apparent. Humanity had come not to defend, but to end the threat entirely. Their ships moved with an unspoken understanding, using tactics that disoriented and dismantled the enemy on both a physical and psychological level. There was no opportunity for the enemy to regroup no space for retreat. Every path was blocked, every maneuver anticipated. Humanity's arsenal, though restrained in numbers, was devastating in impact. Their weapons left no trace of the enemy ships they destroyed, erasing them from existence with a finality that sent a clear signal to anyone watching. The Coalition's commanders, who had previously doubted humanity's methods, now watched in stunned silence. They had expected reinforcement, but had not anticipated this level of precision and, perhaps, cruelty. This was warfare stripped of any notion of diplomacy or mercy. Humanity's forces didn't stop to assess or negotiate. 
They pressed forward with a single goal, total elimination of the threat, no matter the cost. Their tactics revealed a dark pragmatism, a willingness to employ any strategy necessary to secure victory. In the brief lulls between skirmishes, coalition forces could see the aftermath of humanity's approach. Enemy ships lay scattered, reduced to fragments, while humanity's fleet moved onward, unaffected and unbroken. This was not a battle for territory or pride. It was an eradication, a message delivered through action rather than words. Humanity's methods were final, leaving no possibility for retaliation or survival. It was clear that they did not view this as an isolated conflict but as a demonstration, a warning to any who might dare to challenge them in the future. As the battle wore on, coalition forces began to feel a strange mixture of relief and fear. Humanity's power was undeniable, and the enemy fleet was crumbling under their relentless onslaught. Yet there was a coldness to humanity's approach, a sense that they viewed this conflict not as a struggle for survival, but as a calculated exercise. Their ships, while few, operated as though programmed for one purpose, to eliminate every trace of the enemy's existence. The coalition realized that humanity had no need for allies, only results. When the final remnants of the enemy fleet attempted a desperate retreat, humanity's forces blocked every escape route. There would be no survivors, no one left to warn others of Earth's power. The coalition commanders watched as humanity closed in, systematically eliminating every last ship. There was no mercy, no opportunity for surrender. Humanity's response was as absolute as it was terrifying. In their eyes, this was not merely a battle, it was a warning etched into the void. As the dust settled and the last echoes of the conflict faded, humanity's fleet remained poised, and scathed and vigilant. The coalition, though grateful for their survival, felt an undeniable unease. They had called for help, but humanity's intervention had shown them the true cost of such a request. This was no partnership. It was a glimpse into a force that operated without restraint, a reminder that the galaxy had underestimated Earth's potential. And as humanity's fleet prepared to depart, their message was clear without a single word spoken. They were not conquerors, but they were something far more unsettling, a species that held nothing sacred in war, a force that knew no bounds in pursuit of victory. The battle raged on and humanity's strategy unfolded with a meticulousness that left no room for error. Each movement, each strike, followed a sequence so precise it felt almost choreographed. While the coalition had struggled to withstand the enemy's overwhelming power, humanity approached the enemy like a puzzle to be solved, exploiting every weakness with exacting precision. The coalition forces watched, awestruck, as Earth's fleet executed maneuvers that defied conventional tactics using every resource at their disposal to dismantle the enemy step by step. Humanity's tactics were unlike anything the galaxy had seen. Cloaking devices activated and deactivated at precise intervals, creating an illusion of appearing and disappearing forces, disorienting the enemy and disrupting their formations. Enemy commanders, unable to anticipate humanity's next move, found themselves reacting instead of controlling the battle. Humanity's fleet seemed to adapt instantaneously, making every enemy countermeasure obsolete before it could even fully materialize. It was as if humanity had anticipated every possible reaction, every escape route, every potential point of resistance, and adjusted their approach accordingly. For the coalition forces, the psychological impact was as profound as the physical one. Humanity's strategy extended beyond sheer firepower. It was a display of intellectual superiority in warfare. The coalition had always regarded the enemy as a brutal force of nature, a juggernaut that could not be stopped. But here, humanity was demonstrating that war was not merely about strength but about understanding every facet of the enemy's tactics and dismantling them with relentless efficiency. Humanity's war machines didn't pause to celebrate victories. They moved with a cold, unfeeling efficiency that left no doubt as to the outcome. As the enemy's fleet faltered, humanity employed tactics that went beyond physical destruction. Their methods were designed to erode morale as much as to destroy vessels. Precision strikes targeted not only key ships but essential communication relays, isolating groups of enemy ships and sowing confusion in their ranks. Enemy soldiers, 
once fierce and unyielding, became fragmented and panicked as their chain of command collapsed. Humanity's psychological warfare tactics cut deep, a methodical effort to break the enemy's will and render them incapable of coherent resistance. The coalition soldiers, accustomed to facing an enemy that fought with sheer aggression, were now witnessing the methodical, almost surgical nature of humanity's combat. They began to understand that humanity viewed this war in an entirely different light. Earth's soldiers didn't fight for honor or pride, they fought to end threats completely, leaving nothing to chance. To them, every enemy soldier left alive was a potential risk, a loose end that could later return to haunt them. It was a level of ruthlessness that the coalition could barely comprehend, yet they couldn't deny its effectiveness. Throughout the engagement, humanity remained on the offensive. Coalition forces had expected a strategy that involved mutual support and cooperative efforts, but humanity operated independently, as if any assistance was unnecessary. The coalition's role was reduced to that of observers, watching as humanity's fleet executed every phase of their assault with clockwork precision. What they had once seen as human tenacity now seemed closer to an unbreakable determination that bordered on obsession. Humanity's message to the enemy was clear. They had come not merely to win but to obliterate any trace of opposition. Humanity's tactics were brutal, but they left no path for retaliation. By the time the enemy realized the extent of humanity's plan, it was too late. The enemy's formations were shattered, their forces isolated and unable to regroup. Humanity's ships moved seamlessly through the battlefield, dividing and conquering, using advanced technology to detect and exploit even the smallest vulnerabilities. The alien fleet, which had once seemed so invincible, was now reduced to isolated pockets of resistance, each one systematically dismantled without hesitation. The coalition leaders watched in silence, their initial hope now mixed with a deep unease. They had called humanity for help, yet this was more than they had ever anticipated. Humanity's methods were not merely about survival or protection, they were about sending an unmistakable message of dominance. In humanity's approach, there was a finality, a commitment to ensure that their enemy would never rise again. This wasn't just war, it was annihilation, the erasure of an entire threat from existence, and humanity wielded it with an expertise that was both awe-inspiring and chilling. As the last remnants of the enemy fleet fell, the coalition soldiers took in the aftermath. Humanity had turned a hopeless situation into a decisive victory, yet the cost went beyond mere destruction. They had seen humanity's cold, calculated approach, their willingness to do whatever it took to eliminate the enemy. There was no compromise, no hesitation. In every strike, every tactic, humanity had shown that they would not only defeat but eradicate any opposition ensuring that no trace of the threat remained. The enemy was shattered, their remnants scattered and powerless, their morale utterly broken. Humanity's tactics had turned a seemingly invincible force into little more than debris drifting through space. For the coalition, this was both a victory and a stark revelation. They had asked for humanity's help, but now they understood the true nature of their allies. Humanity was not simply a partner in battle. They were a force unto themselves, one that saw war as an exercise in total and irrevocable domination. The enemy's final defenses were crumbling, and humanity moved with the same relentless, unyielding purpose that had defined every phase of their intervention. There were no celebratory messages, no moment of pause, only the cold, systematic conclusion to a battle that humanity seemed determined to end on their terms. They zeroed in on the enemy's central command ships, aiming not merely to dismantle the fleet but to sever its very head, ensuring that no remnants could regroup or retaliate. Each strike was as precise as the last, each tactic meticulously calculated to close any possible escape route. The coalition's leaders, though grateful for the victory they could not have achieved alone, began to understand the full weight of what they had summoned. Humanity had not come merely to defend or assist, they had come to eliminate a threat entirely. As the final enemy command ships disintegrated under humanity's focused fire, it became clear that Earth soldiers were not interested in a battle of attrition or a victory open to interpretation. They fought for absolute finality, leaving no doubt that this enemy would cease to exist. There was no negotiation, 
no mercy extended to any survivors, only a brutal, unforgiving end to those who had dared to challenge them. In the eerie silence that followed, the coalition watched humanity's fleet hold position, ready, it seemed, for any remaining signs of resistance. But the enemy was gone, erased so completely that even debris was scarce, humanity's weapons designed not merely to destroy but to obliterate. Earth's forces lingered in formation, ensuring that every objective was met with the same ruthless thoroughness that had characterized their entire campaign. For humanity, leaving a task incomplete was unthinkable. They remained until every last fragment of the enemy's influence was assuredly purged. The coalition commanders, witnessing this final act, could hardly comprehend the depth of humanity's commitment to ending threats. It was more than defense. It was a philosophy, a principle embedded in their approach to war. The galaxy had long viewed humanity as unpredictable, even volatile, but this display revealed something more disciplined, more chilling. Humanity's approach was either about proving superiority nor exacting vengeance. It was about survival on their own uncompromising terms. They had ensured not only their victory but the impossibility of any resurgence, sealing their dominance with a completeness that left even their allies questioning their understanding of this species. As humanity's fleet finally prepared to depart, a message was sent across the coalition's communication channels, a simple statement without embellishment or bravado, asterisk. You are safe. Asterisk there was no offer of continued alliance, no promise of future support, just the acknowledgement of their mission fulfilled. It was a statement that conveyed as much finality as the battle itself, leaving coalition leaders both relieved and wary. Humanity's intervention had saved them, but it had also exposed them to a force that operated beyond conventional limits, one that adhered to a code of war that did not entertain diplomacy or restraint. In the days that followed, the coalition's surviving leaders held meetings, attempting to process the events they had witnessed. They had asked humanity for help, and Earth had responded, yet the consequences of that response lingered in every discussion. Humanity's methods, while effective, revealed an unsettling reality, that Earth's sense of duty was matched by a capability and willingness to wield total annihilation without hesitation. The coalition had faced annihilation before humanity's arrival, but now, in the aftermath, they were left grappling with the implications of their savior's uncompromising methods. Some leaders argued that humanity's intervention had been necessary, a final solution to an unyielding threat. They saw humanity's approach as a harsh but essential defense, a demonstration of power meant to ensure that no other force would dare to test the coalition's resilience again. Others, however, felt a creeping unease, recognizing that in calling on humanity, they had invited a force that operated with an unyielding code, one that might one day turn that same resolute efficiency against any perceived threat, friend or foe. The galaxy would never be the same after humanity's intervention. News of the victory spread quickly, and with it came stories of Earth's fearsome capabilities. Tales of humanity's ruthlessness, their clinical approach to war, spread across star systems, reshaping the coalition's reputation and creating a cautionary tale that no one would soon forget. Humanity's power had become both a shield and a sword, and the coalition understood that, in seeking Earth's help, they had set a precedent, establishing Earth as a silent, watchful force that could emerge to protect or destroy with equal fervor. As the coalition forces returned to their stations, their leaders were left with a sobering realization. They had called on humanity in desperation, but what they had unleashed was not simply an ally. Humanity's intervention had been a revelation, a testament to a species that would act decisively, without compromise, to end any threat they encountered. The coalition had been saved, but they had also been reminded of the nature of their saviors, a force that held nothing sacred in war, one that would fight on their terms alone. In the end, humanity left no monuments, no treaties, no promises of future assistance. They departed as silently as they had arrived, leaving only the remnants of a shattered enemy fleet and a lingering reminder of their message, survival, for humanity, meant ensuring that no threat remained standing. For the coalition, this was both a victory and a warning, an experience that would shape their view of Earth for generations to come. They had called upon humanity in their darkest hour and had been answered, but the answer had come at a price they were only beginning to understand.